the warfare nowadays is 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 more moving away from traditional warfare to cyber warfare right and you have countries really state actors really uh, moving into this whole thing i mean allegedly right obviously you see when you're dealing with someone uh, like a hacker in in their basement right it's different but when you're dealing with the might and power of uh, a country or a state actor pushing this through right how much more difficult is it there is a well documented and uh, declassified case of the us actually uh, using the stuxnet virus which the us actually used against iran the nuclear enrichment reactors were infected with the malware and they were shut down so there are state actors either ways adversaries both sides so then again there's only a certain extent that you can do so say for example russia and all this right the whole nation is a like there is a lot of coding and development hardcore coding knowledge there in those countries do you want to pick a fight against them <laughs> so ensure that you have your defenses right you have your logging and monitoring it boils down to all those that goes back to the concept of defense in depth do you ensure that you ha- have all those stacks you have starting with your ddos defense against denial of service attacks uh, then you have those protections you have your firewalls you have a web application firewalls and you have a ids intrusion detection systems you have your intrusion prevention systems you although they may be overlapping capabilities they may do the same shit but that's where defense and depth if one doesn't stop something else will stop yeah <laughs> Hey folks welcome to yet another episode of right now show last episode was about uh, moving to US and you know so many stereotypes about US and we had our first international guest last episode and today yet another international guest at our show and uh, yeah it's been fun you know exploring new topics like we spoke about poop we spoke about formula 1 we spoke about vocation and god knows what all <laughs> it's all over the place and today we have a guest who is going to talk about cyber security with all of us so uh please welcome pawan pawan is actually working with one of the leading banks of united states and uh he is working in cyber security for uh past how many years 5 to 10 years almost 5 5 6 years yeah. 6 years now so yeah so he'll be telling us something something really cool you know like uh, i'm not much into cyber security and shit like that but uh, yeah i'll ask some stupid questions and abhinandan will kind of enlighten us with some better questions so yeah i'm looking forward to today's episode from the subject matter expert no questions are stupid yeah <laughs> <laughs> so how did your uh, story start off with cyber security like uh, i mean obviously the world is kind of uh going i mean the whole world is being digitized now right and uh, the uh, the role of cyber security is more important nowadays right all the more important uh, how did your journey start off with this and then uh, what's your liking on this topic one second now huh? before you start uh you just tell roughly what cyber security is for our viewers and what cyber security is not the core of i mean from from a layman standpoint right cyber security generally you think of protecting your information right that's what people think uh, what that's what comes out in the news that yeah this this data breach has happened this data breach uh, target got hit with the data breach some other company got hit with the data breach facebook whatsapp etc so that's what people think of cyber security from the layman's terms but uh, that's just one aspect of it that's just data protection part of it but there are multiple facets and multiple uh modules to cyber security you could say like there is data your data protection then yeah there's your identity and access management your basically how you access your information or your, your authentication your authorization that you have your uh, data protection protection again you it bifurcates into encryption basically ensuring that anything that you put out there anything on any data residing whether it's at rest or whether it's actually in transit over the wire is actually encrypted so that bad actors cannot get to it and uh, that also goes on to uh, further like there's also logging and monitoring ensuring that if at all someone has gotten to it that 
stuff is logged. I know that, yeah, this guy has access to it and he has the right access and there are no alarms that are triggered. Whereas if someone who does not have access to that stuff, there should be an alarm trigger. So that goes to logging and monitoring. Then there's the offensive part of cybersecurity. There's a blue team and red teams wherein you actually test your systems. You actually perform, like play the role of a hacker. And there are teams which uh, try to hack into the applications which are uh, across your uh, enterprise and to see how, how rigid they are, how well defined, how good the cyber defense is. And the controls that you put in place, are they actually working? Are they actually doing the job that they're supposed to be doing or not? So that's uh, another thing. And then, uh, and of course, uh, all in all, if you can bundle everything together, what is cybersecurity? You could, there is a famous acronym that goes by the name of CIA. That's not the American CIA agency, not the Central Intelligence Agency. Mm -hmm. it, it stands for uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These three things comprise, and uh, you could say all of cybersecurity basically boils down to ensuring that you have these three. And of course, there is another concept called non-repudiation. Essentially, so confidentiality, I'll, I'll go further deeper into the sense, in a sense. Confidentiality is, of course, me talking to you, no one should know. Like, uh, it should be secure. The channel should be secure. Only you are the person who's receiving it. Integrity is how do you verify that it's coming from me? How do you know that someone else not, has not changed the information that I'm sending it to you? So in between, so that's integrity. So, and then availabilities, you should of course, uh, like you should be having access to the information that you are allowed to, that you are authorized to have access to that's availability. And then Ron repudiation also is another concept which links to the CIA triad. It's called a triad mm -hmm. and uh, Non-repudiation is in the sense, if I have said something to you, I cannot refute that. If I have said something, I should you should have proof that, yeah, it's me and I cannot argue with that. There are There is a chain of custody that, yeah, it's me who has said that or done that, taken that action. So this is basically what cybersecurity is. CIA, that's it. So how did you get into the CIA? <laughs> so, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, so I did my engineering in uh, electronics and telecommunication back in uh, undergrad in Pune. And then uh, that's where I kind of hit it with uh, like the networking concepts and uh, uh, I took interest in that. And then that, then I went on to work with another uh, software firm in India. And then four years down the line, I decided to actually pursue what I had done in undergrad and actually link, have some link there so that's when i uh look for look for courses uh, in the us which offer a concentration in cyber security alone and then that's when that's when i uh, got into this yeah. and then that's how i came to georgia state and georgia state university and then went on to work there interned with a payments processing firm as a security analyst uh into forensics and uh uh, basically forensics and a little bit of a uh, little bit of the pen testing part that I told you about and then from there I went on to more the architecture side of secure cyber security designing security controls and actually for the complete stack right from uh, the end user to the back end forensic stuff like stuff uh, forensics is essentially when stuff that has already happened you okay. find out who did that and who what happened, how much how much of data has been compromised, where else has the bad actor gotten into, what are the systems does the bad actor have access to now. So that, that's part of it. Then, then I went on to, I joined this bank. Uh, it's, a, I think, the fifth largest bank in the US for, uh, again, as a cybersecurity architect for designing the complete end-to-end -end, uh, architecture of the, of cybersecurity architecture for the bank. So, so yeah. When you speak so much about cybersecurity, the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, like hacking and yeah, you know, yeah. like, so there is like ethical hacking and then there is like obviously immoral and like that, uh, you know, the whole dark side of it. So uh, <laughs> we have watched a lot of Hollywood movies and all, you know, like, and there's like some hacker who is sitting and doing some crazy stuff and like breaking through some, uh, you know, somebody's bank account and God knows what all. So how much of what is portrayed is like true and like, and how, whatever, you know, bust the myth for us. 
So one one movie comes to mind, right? I mean, there are very good. There's a new series, not new exactly, but recently recent series called Mr. Robot. If you've seen that, mm. Mr. Robot, not some sure. of the ex- that's really good. That some of the exploits that he does are actual true exploits. But of course, the timing that they show, they cannot show the exploit. Like, for example, take take the movie Matrix. Matrix was Matrix Revolutions, I think, the second part of. Uh, Mm-hmm. uh in that there's a scene where in trinity the uh, uh the character trinity i don't know who plays it so she does a actual uh, legit hack she actually runs an nmap command and map is and map is essentially network map which scans your whole network for open ports and pro- protocols which are open across all the hosts in the network and then once you find a uh, system which is essentially having its ports open and then you can run execute some shell uh, secure ssh commands against it run some uh, injection attacks against it so she actually does that legit of course the command actually takes a lot of time to run but in the movie they can't take their own sweet yeah. time so they show her immediately finding a host which is available and she uh, runs a crc check crc32 attack essentially uh, there's a kind of attack which you get access to the system and then uh, you write in to write uh, essentially corrupt the data in a, in the memory segments so uh, that, that that matrix part is really legit and they many of the indian movies and all i've seen where they show they simply open up a command prompt and they try to show it as a black, <laughs> black screen and that that doesn't work yeah <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> it depends on the audience right but this mr robot thing they understood that yeah people are beginning to understand people are getting kind of uh, getting the know how as to what exactly is happening there and they are taking the shit seriously and actually showing good real world exploits yeah. Yeah. yeah so i think like in movies and all people generally take a lot of creative liberties and all right like they'll show fast fast typing tak 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 just go that be like wow oh. <laughs> but in real world in cyber if you think it's like if real world cyber sec is like uh, actual those like the movies and they're actually we are all sitting in f- and clicking on our keyboards and actually running exploits against it no it's not that as i said cyber security comprises of huge like of uh, many modules ethical hacking and actual pen- penetration testing is a minor part of it important part of it but a minor part of it so there are red team and blue team exercises that so red team is essentially you have uh you have a uh, bug bounty programs say yeah. uh, companies like your uh, fang companies facebook google and all these companies they put out uh, programs to all of, over the inter- publicly over the internet and they say that uh, anyone who finds a bug or any any vulnerability in the in their systems in their client facing systems they are awarded some they are paid off in fact quite quite a lot so that's one one way of getting to it other way you have your own internal teams such as essentially do the hacking and all that yeah but that's just one aspect of it there are multiple other aspects to cyber security when you kind of got into this whole hacking thing right and obviously you know because when you're chasing them you need to know where the exploits are right and when you got into it initially obviously there's this outside glamour in terms of a hey, bro i'm a hacker bro and all but when you got into it for the first time what was your experience and you were like oh shit this is not what i thought right i mean that some part of it is cool like uh, there were uh, some lab courses in my school in my uh, grad school year and also at work where and we actually dealt with systems which have been exploited we know that they have been exploited remove them from the network take an image uh, so you there's something called as an image uh, image of the boot drive so you take an image of the drive and match the hashes so again a hash is something like uh, there's data you run a math or algorithm against that there are multiple hash sha1 sha2 md5 etc md5 has been deprecated so you run those algorithms and it gives out a hash a 64 bit 128 bit uh, 256 bit string which only can match to that hash Let's say i'm going to a valley and i park i park my car i run read my odometer reading it's at 2000 miles 
and i know that when i come back it should be at 2000 miles if it has changed to 2002 or 2003 i know that the valet guy has screwed around he has gone for a drive and come back and put my car back in so that's exactly what a hash is like if at all there is a change in the hash i know that my file has been changed so uh yeah so essentially those are the kind of things that we dealt with and seeing if what kind of changes have been made to files what uh and then there are there's a neat concept that we also dealt with called steganography steganography is essentially you have a photo and in the photo the uh how it's encoded there are some and how it's written to memory you can have some segments like you can have some encoding in the photo where some memory spaces are empty and you can actually put in data and you can ex like you can exfiltrate information in a photo in a jpeg image so there there are some neat things that we did actually find in the real world where i worked that uh in systems that were infected that are already compromised but yeah those are already removed from the network and then you need to run a complete scan across the network to see that other systems are not infected etc yeah pretty scary <laughs> yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean it's scary in case uh, the person who actually clicked on the link <laughs> that was sent in the nigerian prince promised him 100000 dollars and then yeah, i clicked on it can't blame him right yeah. <laughs> the whole nigerian prince thing is like uh I don't know if it's a stereotype thing, but uh, I think everyone has got that email like yeah, from somewhere. Everybody got it, right? Yeah, long back. Yeah. And apparently, <laughs> there is there. I did read some articles that uh, I don't know how far it's true, but yeah, that actually people did end up. Some people did end up, and it became a real legit uh, way of extortion of money and all that. They did end up getting some money is <laughs> wired to their accounts. <laughs> and I think like, actually... Michael Scott is supporting some twenty Nigerian princes and all now. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, like all these companies that are there, you know, tech giants and uh, like everyone emphasizes so much on cyber security. Uh, mm-hmm. So, do you think that uh, cyber security is little bit like you know like overrated in terms of? Okay, I might be offending you, but <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, the thing is, like, there are like you know forces to keep the uh, keep checks and balances in the company of the security and all, but. obviously there are hackers and all out there but is the force isn't the force like already too strong on the other side like isn't like is do you think it's a little overrated it's i would didn't say it's overrated because it's always it's always a cat and mouse game right things are always like mm. you as of now you have your the it all goes back even to more more slow more slow is that uh, how processing uh, processing power yeah. increases oh. uh, exponentially right on a system so in cyber security and encryption algorithms essentially either you're, you're racing against the math or you're racing against logic so say and mm. a password a password your password is a b c d e or password your password is password and you uh, hash it and you give it, get a hash say it's 1 2 3 4 so there are computers which can actually run attacks against dictionary attacks essentially they have a list of num words they can run against your password and they do it very slowly and then you change your password to password exclamation you have a special character there it takes a little more time but it will get it and like it constantly checks and then uh, then you have you introduce a numeral there you introduce uh, alpha numeric values of small uh, upper case lower case all that you make a combination you make and then it becomes little more difficult difficult more and more difficult for a computer to run a dictionary attack against your password but if processing power is cheap nowadays you have you can stand up a server farm in aws and any of the uh, public cloud providers out there and then say with the advent of quantum computing so how much faster can it get it'll take probably 10 seconds or as of now there are math algorithms which you can uh, math uh, Uh, that you can apply and you can determine as to how much time would a normal computer four core eight core eight core processor take to crack a certain password but uh, think of a quantum computer which is operating not just on ones and zeros it's operating on multiple bits so right it would take even lesser time to crack so it's not overrated it's always a cat and mouse game and mm. as the adversaries keep evolving you also got to evolve your shit and make sure that you are ahead and stay ahead of them Yeah, I mean that gets me to the question in terms of you said about it's a cat and mouse game, and uh, when I mean you're chasing uh, them, right? The warfare nowadays is 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 more moving away from 
ट्रेडिशनल वॉरफेयर टू साइबर वॉरफेयर राइट एंड यू हैव यू हैव कंट्रीज रियली स्टेट एक्टर्स रियली मूविंग इन टू दिस होल थिंग आई मीन एलिजिडली राइट ऑब्वियसली इसी वेन यूर डीलिंग विद सम वन लाइक हैकर इन इन द बेसमेंट राइट इट्स डिफरेंट बट वेन यूर डीलिंग विद द माइट एंड पावर ऑफ अ कंट्री और अ स्टेट एक्टर पुशिंग दिस थ्रू राइट how much more difficult is it right that is the first thing and uh, this also follow ups to the question in terms of a lot of this hacking stuff uh, and the technology is there with the intelligence agencies and those of those those trickle down right to the common public uh, sometime when it's when it's kind of outdated for the agency so how are all of these uh, the warfare aspect of it and then what's coming to us how are they kind of mitigating that risk that's a very good point actually so with state actors there have been cases where and in fact i think there is a well documented and uh, declassified case of the us actually uh, using the stuck there's a uh, uh, virus called the stuck stuck net virus which the us actually used against iran to uh, against the nuclear reactors so the the nuclear enrichment reactors were infected with the malware and they were shut down so uh, goes a little more deeper technical into that but uh, so there are state actors either ways adversaries both sides so then again there's only a certain extent that you can do there are uh, like for example uh, many of the us companies etc they block traffic out and out block traffic from the ofac nations there is a, na- a group of nations called ofac uh, russia cuba and then china china i don't think sometimes it falls into that sometimes they are removed from that then there are some other ukraine i think is one of them and there are some countries which traffic out and out is blocked even if any legitimate banking customer or any customer of that uh, uh, of that application is residing in that country he has to get some special vpn access and try to hit but of course we do see traffic we do see bad traffic coming from those countries through vpns or through uh, but yeah it's up to you to actually determine the true source of the traffic and then block the traffic or not yeah then again uh you got to pick your fights right <laughs> so are you okay are you capable of actually fighting with the nation which is actually say, say, say for example russia and all this right the whole nation is a like there is a lot of coding and development hardcore coding knowledge there in those countries do you want to pick a fight against them <laughs> so that that makes it uh, you ensure that you have your defenses right you have your logging and monitoring it boils down to all those you have your authentication controls you have your uh, uh, forensic capabilities to determine if everything is proper or you have your scanning tools ready so you have that goes back to the concept of defense in depth as what is spoken about everywhere defense in depth you ensure that you have all those stacks you have starting with your ddos defense against denial of service attacks uh, then you have those protections you have your firewalls you have web application firewalls and you have your ids intrusion detection systems you have your intrusion prevention systems you although they may be overlapping capabilities they may do the same shit but that's where defense and if one doesn't stop something else will stop yeah one more question that you know like i wanted to ask was uh... Uh, the whole facebook thing that happened right the whole data privacy thing and like suddenly people became so aware of that oh facebook has everything you know like some 68% of your likes and interests is known by facebook or whatever percentages they try to put in so uh like is it a myth or like like are they like using our data or like what's going on that data is essentially metadata it's not exactly data that would be mm. something that facebook and most of our most of the companies out there classify as metadata that's data about data so your information of where you have been that you have made it public it's up to you you have there's a famous south park episode that comes to my mind they <laughs> if you watch the south park that they it goes into like people who didn't reach the agreement you didn't read and they get get screwed up because they didn't read the whole fine print and they just clicked on i agree which most of us do yeah, yeah so <laughs> so uh, that got highlighted because of course yeah i mean facebook is monetizing the data that metadata that's capturing from users which users have accepted 
but it's up to you like i feel uh, of course the larger population is not that well aware as to how the data can be used and how that may lead to adverse situations sharing my location mm. someone may utilize that and may it may have some impact not on the re- digital world on the actual real world it may have some impact but yeah uh, i believe it is good that it came out of course it is good and people are more aware as to what people have uh, actually uh, from in enterprise how it has impacted enterprises is people have gone and started using more robust authentication and authorization schemes they have started using there's a concept called uh, oidc open ID, open id connect that's a pro, that's a protocol for authentication the way you see when you log in log into a third party website using google or using facebook yeah. that does hmm. that essentially uses that protocol and there is what uh, open authorization tool framework which essentially there's a consent page which it shows you a box uh, you consent to giving facebook information uh, access, access to your photos and your location you can uncheck those boxes if you do not wish to so that uh, of course it all boils down to education again there needs to be more awareness and people let them know that yeah you are giving consent to facebook when you are checking those boxes do you think i think we are too far into this data sharing business because i mean i read a place where in uh, we were kind of the last generation wherein we had our data private right and uh, going forward the next coming generations it's going to be all about monitoring i mean everyone's going to be monitored more uh, right you already have everywhere security cameras and stuff like that and with all obviously with all of this terror threat and all of that stuff right there's an increasing talk about monitoring becoming the new norm right and yeah, more than mo- more than monitoring yeah i mean we go even with that from working from an enterprise standpoint we go with the thinking that we have already been breached there is already yeah. someone inside the network there's already our data we do monitor there are teams which actually monitor the dark, dark web they do monitor tor websites and other websites and they see they do actually see account numbers and uh, email id password combinations being sold in the dark web and based on how reliable those are the price is set and you do see those ex- uh, actual data being sold in the dark web so i mean you should go with the standpoint that everything that you do is public then are you okay with that is what where it comes to like are you okay i mean having my metadata having my location shared publicly i don't from personal standpoint i'm okay with it but having even having my bank account balance i'm okay with it and does what can people do with the balance nothing much the rest of stuff that actually matters to me my passwords my private keys etc that as long as people are aware that that shouldn't be exposed that should be fine i think there are a lot of this password managers and all that that's uh, a very good thing yeah. yeah so i Otherwise, think uh, last pass bitwarden and there are a few things that's, yeah that lots a good thing I, I, last pass is a, i mean you get them to uh, sponsor you and put in a plug here <laughs> 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 i wish yeah you can actually reach out to them tell them yeah. that we are discussing this shit and yeah and so yeah last pass is a really good tool and which i've used in the past and uh, i mean essentially <laughs> puts you away from using your kid's birthday or your dog's name as a password right so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, it basically has all passwords in one place yeah uh, so how safe is that like exactly that becomes a choke point then that becomes one single uh-huh. point of attack so that 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 goes on to decentralization and centralization like you know the advent of blockchain and all these technologies right cryptocurrencies and uh, basically mm-hmm. blockchain that is decentralizing the whole network decentralized there are tokens and technologies that decentralize the internet there are no single thought and single choke points so that's a very good thing but again you have exchanges which deal with blockchains uh, cryptocurrencies you have a coinbase that is a centralized exchange which actually is defeating the purpose again like it's becoming a centralized so you hack into that central repository you get everything so you hack in someone hacks gets into your lastpass they get your credentials probably so 
yeah. that that but at least one less password one ring to rule them all yeah. lot of rings yeah. yeah so that's true so you have just one password to remember the day someone hacks it that will be the last day someone uses last pass <laughs> yeah now you can't ask them for a plug <laughs> yeah.